Hey, Aaron Marco here from Core Performance. I just wanted to talk a little bit today about my SWAT Heavy Rig. Um, this is We have a couple different types of kits set up for different mission sets. Uh, this is the one that we use the majority of the time um, because it offers the most coverage for us. And most of the time when we're uh, sit waiting and talking, then you know we have a, more ability to uh, have coverage and protection uh, from anything that might happen. So um, this rig has got level 3A armor throughout the neck, on the back of the neck. Um, over biceps and deltoids on the arm. Uh, we lost a deputy uh, many years ago uh, when he got shot through the arm, so this is uh, pretty much a must-have for our guys. Uh, got level three plus rifle plates in here and front and back, and that's the majority of the armor aside from the ever important dick pad, which is you know probably the most valuable asset that you're bringing to the call out. Um, as far as setting this up for equipment, I tend to run my stuff up here pretty slick. I don't like stuff interfe interfering with my rifle, so I have this right side here where my rifle is slung and all that uh, pretty clean. Um, really, I've just got admin pouch, which is just little stuff, pens and handcuff key. Uh, we use a Crayola marker where if we're inside of a structure like a school and we need to mark that we've cleared a door, um, we can write on that. Um, we can also do the same thing during training and uh, the training sites don't get cranky with us that we're screwing up their uh, pretty doors or whatever. Something to write on. I usually got snacks in here. Uh, I've got my gas mask extender for my uh, helmet chin strap. Mostly just little little things that I need from time to time. Um, and then flashlight. Uh, usually using this guy uh, after operations when we're doing our after actions walkthrough or uh, you know, generally after the hit, you know, something where my hands are free and I just need this. I don't necessarily need to be pointing a gun at anybody. Um, so I'll roll with that guy. Um, one magazine, uh, I carry one in the rifle, one on my vest, one on my belt. Uh, I have 90 rounds of, of 5.56 with me. Um, I've always been of the opinion that if uh, I need to look like that I'm operating in Iraq, maybe I should just learn to shoot better. And, you know, that would be a, a more important point. I also operate with a bunch of other guys that also carry the same magazines and we have an armored truck. So, um, you know, the trade off of more weight and mobility, I'd rather be more mobile and uh, 90 rounds in my world should take care of the majority of the problems. Um, little cool guy kit. I really like the uh, knife that Shinobi was put together. I was looking for something to replace my old blade. Fits now uh, nicely down behind my uh, my rifle kit. Um, it's got a nice handle where I can run this thing left-handed. Um, I took and, and did my own wrap job. You'll have to tell me if you think it's worth half a crap or if I uh, should have had the professionals do it. But uh, I enjoyed his blade. It's uh, it's pretty slick setup. It's very, very stout. The way this is cut and sharpened, uh, the sharpened edges on either side are, are very, very sharp. And this edge here is going to be really stout because it's flat and not ground down again. So you don't have any uh, um, weak uh, points to the blade. Um, in addition, if um, I'm an explosive guy, and so I tend to use my knife a lot more for cutting and utility work. So when I come in here to actually do cutting on things like this guy, if I was going to come in here and cut this deck cord up for my sliding hinge charge or whatever it is, I'm going to get this on my, my solid wooden surface. I obviously wouldn't do it on my vest or on any piece of metal, but when I go to cut, I have a nice flat cut that I can use this for. Um, and it's going to provide me with a, a nice clean way to get that debt cut in, in its right place. So I keep it set up uh, for a left-handed draw um, where I've got a weak side weapon to access if I need to. Uh, I really like the ring style setup, kind of like a karambit where I've got something that I can retain it with. Um, if I need to do something else or if I get struck maybe an elbow where they're trying to disarm me and my hand comes open, I'm not losing my blade out you know, somewhere. I've got a good way to retain it. So slick setup from uh, Shinobi there. All right, so as far as communications go, um, if you watch the video where I talk about my helmet rig, you'll see I have the TCI Lib 2s. Um, so I've got their push to talk here, which is nice. Mounts Velcro right direct on, on my chest so I don't have it moving around. Um, I'm a little bit OCD about how I wire everything up, so I definitely wanted to make sure I had space in here for my buttstock in case I was shifting to my weak side shoulder. Um, so I've got this lift out here. Uh, what I'll usually done is do is run the cable from my helmet down here underneath my shoulder pad and then connect in through here. Now I've got a stable connection that's not going to snag on anything. It's not sticking way out and driving me crazy. Um, and then run the cable around to the back. 
and run my radio right here. Now this looks like it's way on my back, but when it's on me, it's actually right here. So I can adjust the volume, which is the majority of the time what I need to do um, with just shoving my thumb back there and hitting the side of the radio pouch. Um, all right. So I can reach back here and adjust this with just my thumb and I can feel it. Um, if we need to switch radio channels or whatever, I can get my partner in here to uh, adjust that and make sure I'm on the right place. Uh, but other than that, it makes a pretty compact package. And then a uh, gas mask for all the fun OC and CS uh, playtime that we get to have. We uh, finally got some of the Avons, which are pretty nice. Um, this guy's uh, nice and, and stout. We'll, definitely fend off some munition rounds well. Um, this mask is actually fairly comfortable to wear as far as gas masks go. Um, quick pro tip here, make sure that your gas mask uh, filter is always screwed in. Uh, I remember went for a CS research and uh, went into the gas house to go, you know, do whatever task it is that I have. And I started just choking, sputtering and, you know, almost gagging into my mask, go bailing outside and realize that this thing was falling off and basically not screwed all the way in. Bad times, bad times. So pro tip, keep that sucker screwed in. It will help you out in the future. So I have that guy bailed down as close as I can. It sucks to sit on, uh, lean up against, but I don't really have another good place to put it. So that's where it ends up going. And then last toy that I have, uh, this is an old school H HSGI EOD rig uh, that flaps open here. I'm one of our explosive breachers. So I've got uh, plenty of toys in here that, uh, that I use when we need to open the door quickly. Um, and this guy is, um, I'm using a pair of the Molly sticks, which is probably the only application I've seen where it's actually useful. Uh, but I can get this guy to fit right down here. It's on the same level as my gas mask. And um, all I have to do is reach back here, pull this off, the whole pouch comes off, and now I've got all my uh, equipment and tools accessible to me. Um, if we're doing some work where I have to build a charge or something and have some time, I can come up here and attach this guy up on the cummerbund or something like that. So I've got it laid out in front of me. I can open up the, you know, the pouch and have everything set up to where I can go up and uh, work whatever I need to. So it gives me a little bit of modularity, but probably the only place where I'm actually going to be moving any of my equipment around. But for the most part, uh, the yeah, last item, which I kind of yanked out of. So I had this wonderful pad, right, that uh, I'm using for a whole lot of nothing. Uh, picked up one of the Spirit of System uh, lunch boxes. Uh, I really like the way it's set up. I got a lot of different options on the inside as far as being able to hook stuff in here for retention. Uh, times I've run 40 millimeter, um, either impact or CS or something like that. I can drop a canister in here. I can drop a bunch of 40 millimeter launchables, some barricade penetrators, whatever it is. Um, I can set these up here for quick access if I've got um, in a direct impact round or something like that. I can hang them off so that I've got my reload in a handy place and I don't have to start stashing it all over the place. Um, you know, another quick pouch where I can put my, my cell phone or other snacks, you know, important stuff that I have to access. Um, on the back here, I can weave in uh, some of my shock tube for, uh, you know, some of blasting caps or something to keep that out of the way and I can feed it out as I go back. So it's really set up to be kind of a breacher's assistant pouch. Um, I try to use it not necessarily as a place where I'm storing equipment, but as when I'm using it to be on a breach to store whatever tools it is that I'm going to use on the immediate side or, you know, necessarily if I'm moving up, I can take my entire charge here. And this, this charge in particular is small enough where I can fit it in here. Now I've got my hands free to do whatever it is I need to do when I get up to the door and uh, still have everything hooked up, be able to come out, put my shooter in here, whatever it is. But it just gives me some options. And then, of course, the ubiquitous um, tourniquet hanging from the bottom of everything. Out of the way, easy to get to with both hands. Got to have them. And I got another one on my leg rig, so I always have two.